What's up, YouTube fans? Today, we're going to take a look at the Fans Toys Rig, their version of a Masterpiece Huffer. So, this is the next in the line of mini bots from Fans Toys. Um, this just came out this past week or two, and you did see Pig's view video on this, and it looked really nice. So, I'm happy to get this in here. Um, really nice looking. Let's put the G1 cartoon image there so you can take a look. You got the nice metallic blue and the lighter blue there. Silver here on the arms, orange here on the feet and the shins, and then the backpack, of course, which is accurate to the cartoon. Folds up nicely into the a cube. Oh, that looks great. Looks very nicely cartoon accurate. The elbows, or I guess, sorry, the uh, shoulders are lower on the body. It does look awkward, but it is also cartoon accurate. Really nice face sculpt on there. You got the metallic blue eyes. I love when they do metallic blue. Lighter blue for the face and then darker on the helmet. And then you got the outline around the eyes. That all looks really nice. Uh, he does come with some accessories. So you do get two guns like this. And they're both sculpted and painted very, very nicely. I really like how these look. I, I found on my copy, and it looks like every copy of this guy, the right arm or the right hand is misshapen. And there's a little slot there for the tab on the back of the gun. It does not go in, unfortunately. It either is misshapen or mismolded, but no matter how you push, it doesn't really go in. But you can just, with friction, close the hand around it and it will hold with tension. So you can do that. You don't have to force it in there if you don't want to. You can just kind of put it there and then give it some tension. This hand on the other side seems to work a little bit better. So you can't actually get the gun pegged in there. And then close it up. So I'll probably fix this one. I'll probably shave a little bit of material on the inside of that hand. It's a very delicate process. I'm not going to recommend it for anybody, but you could probably get these to fit a little better. But there you go. This is my preferred look for him. He looks really good with those guns. But if you don't like those, you get a third gun, this machine gun here. Um, it does fold up. You can fold up the handles all the way. Actually, this is kind of fits together. But you can see this gun, this handle has an extra little lip there. And that prevents it from going in. I'm almost thinking of just cutting this off because it doesn't really allow it to fit in either hand. And again, you can just hold it with tension, but it won't fit. So I'll just put in this one just for example. You know, you can try to force it in there, but it's going to it's gonna bend the plastic. So I would recommend you just put it in with tension and that's fine. Now, if you want to dual wield it, it is a little bit tricky. You can get the arms positioned, but you kind of have to really work at it to get it right. Um, and it's just a little bit awkward. All right, there it is. That's probably the best I can do. It's kind of awkward just due to the shape and the way the arms move. It makes it a little difficult to get that in. But you can do it if you want to. Me, personally, I prefer the smaller guns. Now you do get one more accessory, which is an alternate head. So here is the stock head. In order to get this off, you're basically gonna pull it straight forward. It's on a slider. It's a little bit hard to get back there, but you wanna slide that off and it just kind of popped off. But there you can see how it's mounted. It just slides right on. And here's the new head. So you just slide that on the same port there. And that looks pretty good too. I actually like both. I think both head sculpts look good. I, I knocked the back pocket off there, but there you go for the alternate head sculpt. All right, now let's check out his articulation. So the head is on that rotating swivel, so it goes up to there, down to there, not much down, rotates all the way around. You do have to work around, obviously, the backpack here, but it works. Shoulders rotate around on a ratchet all the way around. They go up to here on this joint, which is used for transformation and you have a no rotation in and out, no butterfly. Um, and it, because of the way it works, it's a little awkward because if you want the arm pointing outwards, 
it doesn't really get there, right? Because of the sculpt. And that's really just due to the design of the character, right? That's not really fans toys fault because they've mounted the shoulder in the middle of the chest had it been up here it would have been easier to get articulation out of there but also just a little limited there elbow rotates to 90 degrees the rotation at the elbow the wrist rotates here and then the hands are in a single pin like all of their other mini bots all the fingers are on one pin you have a rotation at the waist. You don't have an ab crunch. You have a little tiny, like, maybe a millimeter of ab crunch. Not much. So I'm not even sure why they bothered with that. Maybe for transformation. But, you know, the smallest ab crunch I've ever seen. You have hip skirts here. I don't love single hip skirts like that. I, I almost wish I could get somebody to customize this and cut it up but it goes up to there on a ratchet out to the side on friction it does bump up against this hips kit here I'm, I'm a little worried to push this it doesn't seem like it goes any further and then to the back limited by this hip skirt back here rotation at the thigh single jetty knee gets you a little past 90 degrees ankle tilt all the way up to there no pivot back and forth but you do have a rotation so you can get some odd angles using that rotation if you need to. And for size comparison, there is rig next to the recent Takara Tomy Masterpiece Skids, the Fans Toys version of Braun, and then back here we got MP44. Fits in nicely with the other mini bots. Of course, the Fans Toys are all scaled together. All right, now let's get rig transformed into his truck mode. Relatively simple transformation and kind of fun, but there's a couple steps to watch out for. So let's get started. We'll start off with the chest here. So go ahead and come to the back here. Open up this part here. I'll allow you to kneel back this backpack. Come to the sides. We're going to bring down the arms. And these might be a little tight at first because it is a painted part. So over time that will loosen up. Go ahead and take these panels here and bring those up and bring your finger back here you're going to push on these tires that allow you to bring the chest forward and unaccordion all of that bring the wheels up from the bottom and tab them in to the front of the chest go ahead and take the waist that's going to rotate 180 degrees then we're going to bring this down and tab this in so it's going to line up there's a tab right here and then two for the legs so basically get the legs straightened out and actually what we can do is rotate the feet and allow us to get the legs nice and straight and then line up all those tabs and get those in if you don't have the legs straight it won't go in so make sure you have the legs nice and straight right, so let's get those Tabs in, and you should feel it click into place, just like that. All right. Next, we'll take care of these legs. So go ahead and open up these panels here on the side. That's going to allow you to take the entire shin and accordion that forward. You can close that back down, and then open up this panel here. It is on a double hinge, so you want to open up both double hinges and straighten this up. So it ends up like that. Right. Same on this side, go ahead and open up this panel. Accordion this down. Close that back down. And then open up this double hinge and make this nice and straight. And it should end up with that. Right. Uh, now we can work on the upper body here. Um, these seem to have gone back in, but if they haven't, go ahead and push those back down. Leave the arms down so the arms should be in this position. Basically shoulders straight out. If you want, you can turn the head around. I'm going to leave it, but if you don't want the head poking out of the bottom, you can turn it around. I think it's fine though. Alright, so we're going to take this backpack apart. Go ahead and unpack this. And we're going to pull away, up and away, 
and it's a little tricky. You got to get this part out, this part out, and then you can pull the entire backpack up and away. All right. So this is going to make the front of the cab, obviously. So we're going to fold these upwards. Come to the front here, fold out these windshield pieces. And then on the inside, you're going to fold this up and fold out that panel that's going to be the front of the truck. And then these panels are going to come down and they should basically just straighten up next to this like that and then there's tiny little tabs you can see those right there they're gonna tab in to the front of the glass right see them on this side get this in and tab those in and if it doesn't go it means you don't have this straight all right so get those lined up and get those in all right so it should look like that and we can leave this down like this for now we're gonna have to move some things all right, next, go ahead and come to the bottom here. You can pull that panel straight down. And that's going to allow you to take the wheels. And you kind of have to lift them up and out of the way first. And then get them all the way to the other side. Same for both sides. Flip this around and get it pegged in. Now you can take this panel and bring that back out. All right? This entire assembly is going to come down. And these tabs right here are going to fit into the shoulders. So bring that down and it's tabbing in here as well. So get all that situated first. So let's just do that. And you can kind of give it a little squeeze right here so that that all squeezes together. Uh, and it should end up nice and flush. Okay. Go ahead and take this. And this is going to come back down. Now you should have these two tabs upwards. And that will allow you to put the weapon in over there. Take this. Close that down. And then take this panel. Fold that down. And it's going to peg into the back. Just like that. Right. Now we can take the front. So go ahead and take this panel. And this is actually going to peg in right here. So there's a blue tab right there so get that in and just give that a little squeeze so see that blue tab came through and now we'll take care of this front of the cab and this is probably maybe one of the trickier steps because you got it in the right order and you have to get it pegged in correctly but so first start with these corner tabs so get those in on both sides and I would get this one in and then get this front tab in. Now do this one. And then come to the back and push these sides in. And it might have moved out of position. Just reposition it and put the side in. So it should end up like that on the front. Um, if it's not straight, you should straighten up this panel right here. So it's nice and flush. Take the arms, rotate those up. These are going to fold on the shoulder joint here, not this blue piece, but the the swing arm that we had. So it should end up like that. Take the hand. The hand's going to rotate. Don't rotate the arm, just the hand, so that the thumb faces this way. Go ahead and push this down, and then I'll allow you to take this. This is a perfect fit, so you want to have this all lined up. I had it lined up, so it just went on easy. If you don't have it lined up, it's going to have problems. So make sure you have it all straight. Same on this side. Bring the arm up. Fold it in on that joint. Rotate the hand to the outside. And you could probably rotate that before we put it in. So it's a little bit easier. And I like to have the pins facing back like that on the arms. All right, go ahead and take this. That's going to cover up the hand. Come to the bottom here, we're going to take these little shoulder caps, those are going to fold inwards. Same on this side, those are going to fold inwards. There you have Rig in his vehicle mode, really nice looking truck mode. We'll put the G1 cartoon image there so you can take a look at that. I think that did a nice job representing that original cartoon. You do have the frosted blue glass here. 
This is close enough. It is actually painted blue, but it does match very nicely. I like that you can't really see inside. That's nice. You have the painted grill. You have the translucent headlights there. On the side, you've got rubber tires with chrome rims. That all looks good. The smokestacks look good. They're covered up. You don't see the hands or anything. Nice and clean. There's a little bit of stuff going on here. Uh, you can kind of see through the side of it, so there's a lot of like structure, structural pieces, and that doesn't look great. From the back, looks okay. Little gap here. Um, but overall, nice looking truck. But here's the back. You have sort of fake taillights back here. You can't take the weapons, this one in particular, if you close this handle, you fold this back, this will fit right here on that little tab I told you to fold out earlier. And you can actually take these guns and fold up those handles and those will peg in as well. I suppose you could do this in the robot mode too and make this super weapon for his robot mode, but this looks nice. I like how they did that, a nice equal storage for his weapons. And it does roll very nicely and smoothly, especially across my area. Really nice. And for comparison, there is Fans Toys Rig next to MP10, the Fans Toys version of Sea Spray, and then the Takara Tomy Reboost. And it makes sense. Truck, but not a huge truck. I like the size, and I like how it fits in with the other vehicles. So final thoughts on the Fans Toys rig. Let's start with the positives. I think the paint and sculpt deco all look really nice. All, always premium as with uh, Fans Toys. Paint looks good. There's actually quite a bit of die cast, really nice materials. So I forgot to mention the, the thighs, the calves, the chest here, all die cast, really feels nice and looks premium. I also think the weapons are nicely done, nicely sculpted and painted. Even this one's nicely sculpted and painted. Only problem is this handle doesn't fit well. I think it's due to this little extra tab here. So negatives wise, the gun doesn't fit very well, especially in the right arm. It needs to be, you know, remedy. I'll probably fix that myself. I also like the extra head. That's nicely done. And overall, you know, comes with some nice accessories. Negatives wise, the articulation is a little bit limited. Uh, some of it is due to the character design, especially at the shoulders, having the shoulders mid chest does limit what he can do. Um, it's same for the elbows. I don't know if that's character design or just fans to his choosing not to give him a double jointed elbow. And then same for the ankles. This probably could have had a pivot in it, but those things are limitations on this figure. But other than that, I really think this is a good figure. I definitely recommend it. I think it's a fun figure to transform. It looks good in both modes, cartoon accurate, and very premium. So you can pick this up at Toy Dojo. Now, I did get the reissue of the Bad Cube Huff, and it was on order. I'm not sure if they're ever going to reissue it. It's been about a year since I ordered that. Uh, I did contact Toy Dojo to find out. But... You can pick up this guy right now. There's a couple copies left on Toy Doe's website, so the link is in the description below if you're interested in buying it. Um, I may do a versus with this guy here, which is the final victory. I'm still considering whether to do or not. But for now, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.